Hello and welcome to a brand new tutorial video. Today we will look at Wallachia and a Dracula's Revenge achievement. Wallachia is one of the harder starts in game as you are surrounded by some of the biggest nations in Ottomans, Hungary, well soon to be Austria-Hungary Union, and the soon to be Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth with Moldavia as their subject. And you don't even have a coastal province for some cheesy shenanigans. Like any other small nation star, you will be at the mercy of some RNG magic, and you will need to be patient and grab the chances when they come. We will go over the specifics in this video. For the Dracula's Revenge achievement, we need to form Romania and own or have a subject own all of the Balkans. We can do this achievement starting as either Wallachia or Moldavia. And actually, the achievement is easier starting as Moldavia. But for this video, we will do it the hard way starting as Wallachia because if you're doing the Dracula's Revenge, you gotta start as the Draculesti, right? At the start, Wallachia is surrounded by Ottomans to the south, who are the strongest nation in the region and we obviously cannot take them on, Hungary to the north, who are also fairly strong, and Moldavia to the east, who look like someone we can take on, but they start as being guaranteed by Poland, which is not good for us. So basically, we don't have any avenue for expansion. What we need to do is get some allies. Unfortunately, we start as Orthodox, surrounded by Catholic and Muslim nations, so it becomes a bit harder to get allies too. The first thing we need to do is start improving relations with everyone, except a couple of nations we are going to rival, but we will wait for it till we get a guarantee. Usually, if you improve relations with Hungary, they will guarantee you, and sometimes even Ottomans will guarantee you at the start. Just wait for that to happen, then you can set Serbia and Moldavia as rivals. Also build the army to force limit and start drilling them. We have some time to get that guarantee as we have truce with Ottomans till 1449. Once you get the guarantee, keep improving relations with Hungary and put the second diplomat to improve relations with Albania. That's very important. Next we will wait for the Romans invasion event to fire. This is an event for Moldavia where they decide if they become a march of Poland or a march of Hungary or remain independent. That's an RNG thing and AI can take any of those three decisions. In my game, Moldavia became a march of Poland, which is not good as now I can't expand in that direction early. So I was just sitting doing nothing for a long time and it goes totally against how I usually play, but you will have to get used to it for this playthrough. Keep improving relations with everyone in the meantime. So after waiting around doing nothing and playing at speed 5, finally in 1447 my patience ran out and I decided to attack Serbia with the humiliate CB. They were only allied to Bosnia so the war wasn't too hard to start with but they were also fighting Venice and Ottomans so this was a great time to attack them. From this war I took the show strength option, if you don't know, with show strength you get 30 power projection and 100 monarch points for each category which is amazing. And after that, it was just more waiting and improving relations with everyone and keeping the army busy with drilling. I was waiting for Ottomans to attack Albania as that was the moment I wanted to fight Ottomans. And it finally happened in 1456. Albania is guaranteed by Venice and if you keep relations topped up with Albania, you can ally them pretty quickly. So that's what I did. And as soon as I allied them, I got the call to arms as Albania was in a defensive fight against Ottomans and Crimea. And now we were fighting the Ottomans. This war is not pretty. You will get some of your provinces seized down and you will accrue some war exhaustion. Just make sure you don't lose your army. Group up with the Venetian army and stay close to them. If Albania still has their three-star general, the wars will be a bit easier. But it's better to just not engage with Ottomans army at all. They are just too powerful. And if you have been improving relations with other nations, you might even get some money from them while fighting Ottomans. And Mamluks can even give you subsidies, which helps a lot. When the Ottomans army was off fighting Venice, I managed to siege down Adirne, thanks to my 3 siege general. They had the war goal siege down though, and eventually in 1462, after a long, long war, a white peace was signed, giving me another five years of truce to figure out the next steps. While I was fighting Ottomans, Poland was busy in three wars. They got attacked by Hungary, Bohemia and Teutonic Order. Also in my game, Poland did not take Lithuania as PU subject, which is again an RNG element, which this time worked in my favor. 
Poland lost a bit of land and also Moldavia was released as a march. So now Moldavia was independent and all alone. It was a perfect time to attack them. I started building spy network on them to get a claim. Because we already need a couple of provinces from them to form Romania. Well, we actually just need to take all of them to expand anyways. I declared on Moldavia as soon as I had a claim. They were allied to Ryazan for some reason and the war was easy. During this time, my ruler finally died and we got an event. We can either choose a 105 ruler and get some free admin points or we get some pretender rebels. I would just take the ruler here. I mean, a ruler with 105 stats isn't great. You could roll the dice on pretender rebels and maybe get a better ruler, but I usually just take the 105 ruler. From the Moldavia war, I full annexed them. This meant some aggressive expansion, but it wasn't bad. And you have to expand wherever you can as fast as you can. Few years after that, I was still improving relations with everyone. And finally, I managed to royal marry an ally Lithuania. As I mentioned earlier, Lithuania did not go under PU with Poland. In my game, Hungary did form the PU under Austria though. So now I was improving relations with Austria. And soon after, I was able to royal marry and ally Austria as well. That also completes a mission as you need to ally one of Ottoman's rivals. This gives us some Diplorep, Improved Relations Modifier, and permanent claims on all of Bulgaria area. So now I had Lithuania and Austria-Hungary as allies, and I did not really need Albania as my ally anymore. Albania was still guaranteed by Venice, and they had Cyprus as an ally, but they were going to get attacked by Ottomans again sometime in near future, and I did not want to fight them right now. My plan was to wait till I had enough favors with my bigger allies, Lithuania and Austria, to fight the Ottomans. So I dissolved my alliance with Albania, and sure enough, they were gone soon after. Poland, on the other hand, were not having a good game either. They were at war with Bohemia, Brandenburg, and Teutonic Order once more. So I decided to start building spy network on them and declared on them in 1477. Poland had no allies, they had just lost a war, and they had some rebel issues. It was a very easy war for me. From this war, I took 100% war score worth of provinces. As I mentioned, I wanted to expand fast because you accrue favors with your allies depending on the relative size of your nation to theirs. So the bigger I got, the faster I will get favors and the sooner I can attack Ottomans. Good thing about expanding in this particular direction is that it's mostly orthodox provinces with helps with religious unity and rebel situation. As an orthodox nation, we can also form PUs being a Christian nation. And I was keeping an eye on the disputed succession tab. Bohemia did not have an heir with a 54 year old king. So I decided to royal marry them and see what happens. I actually allied them too. So now I had Austria, Hungary, Bohemia and Lithuania as allies. Safe to say I was safe from any aggression from Ottomans now. Bohemia eventually got an heir and the PU situation did not work out for me. The next few years was more of just waiting around for favors to take up slowly. Eventually, in 1496, I decided to finish off Poland and full annex them. Now I was pretty big and look at that nice Wallachia name placement. Also during this time, I noticed Lithuania did not have an heir and their king was 42 years old. I already had a royal marriage with them and the tooltip said that at monarch's death, there would be a succession war between Wallachia and Muscovy. And if you remember my PU video, you will know that defender's name is put first. So this means we would be the defender and Muscovy would be the attacker if the Lithuanian king died without an heir. And two years later, it actually happened. Lithuanian ruler died and I got the PU. Muscovy decided to contest the PU so there was a succession war, but since I was the defender, I could call in my allies Austria and Bohemia. Muscovy has a big army, but this war wasn't going to be hard. Soon after though, Denmark decided to join in the war with its two subjects, Norway and Sweden against me. So the war was now looking more even and I didn't want this war to go on for too long so I peaced out with just some money. And now I had two strong allies and a PU subject in Lithuania who was disloyal right now but that won't be a problem for long. It was again time to wait and do nothing for a while. I wanted to get my subject's liberty desire down while waiting to get 10 favors from Austria and Bohemia. Finally, after 10 years or so, I saw that Ottomans were busy fighting Muscovy, so this could be a good opportunity. Their allies Crimea and Tunis weren't joined in the war. I called in Austria, but Bohemia did not want to fight this war for some reason. And so began my first offensive war against Ottomans in 1512. Despite my strong allies, this war wasn't easy because, you know, it's Ottomans. 
but they were busy with Muscovy which gave me a chance to siege down most of Balkans. Sieging down their capital completes a mission, Impale the Sultan, which gives an event and a lot of claims. With the event, Impalement of Padisha, Ottomans lose both their ruler and their heir. So I thought, great, maybe they will get a below average ruler. But instead, they got a 4-4-5 ruler. Because of course they did, it's Ottomans. Oh well. From this war, I managed to take some coastal provinces including Constantinople, which is a big first step in defeating Ottomans. Now to form Romania, all I needed was one more province from Hungary, who was under PU of my ally Austria. So that will have to wait for a bit as I still needed Austria to fight against Ottomans. The Ottomans war ended in 1516 and in the intervening years I was improving relations with some big nations before I eventually backstab Austria. I managed to ally Mamluks as they would help me out against Ottomans. Then I got a regency council in 1533 and finally in 1541 I found the right circumstances where I could attack Ottomans once more. Like I said, this playthrough was a whole lot of waiting around playing on speed 5. Ottomans did not have a major ally and I was able to call in Mamluks with promise of land and Austria. Bohemia still refused to join the war against Ottomans, so they were proving to be a useless ally. But I declared the war anyways. My plan with this war was to siege down the Balkans while Ottomans are busy with Mamluks because I knew Mamluks would not be able to hold their own against Ottomans. Mamluks pieced out separately soon after. And from this war I managed to take a few more provinces. I wanted to get a neighboring province to Ragusa and I wanted the province of Ederne. Right as I finished this war I got called into another war by Austria. They had declared a punitive war against France. I decided to join in but I didn't really help them at all. After waiting for a few more years I noticed that Ottomans were busy fighting Muscovy once more. So this would be a great time to attack Ottomans again. But I had a truce with them till 1554 that was 6 more years. So instead, I decided to attack Ragusa, who were guaranteed by Ottomans. And this time, Bohemia would join the war. So it was Ragusa, Ottomans, Augsburg and Cyprus versus me, Lithuania, Austria, Hungary, Bohemia and Mamluks. Needless to say, this was not a difficult war. I took one province from Ottomans and war reps, then I vassalized Ragusa and force converted them to Orthodox in the peace deal. Finally, in 1554, I decided to ditch my alliance with Austria. It was time to take the last province needed to form Romania. I was getting ready to attack Austria after 5 years when I had another regency council. So now I was waiting for that to be over. In the meantime, I managed to ally both France and Castile. As in my game, they were actually allied with themselves. I also broke my alliance with Bohemia as they were not proving very useful as allies. Austria had a lot of big allies now though, so I wanted to wait till I got some favors with my new allies. France called me into war a few years later which meant I could get some favors with them and finally in 1588 I declared on Hungary. Austria would call in England, Bohemia, Clevis, Palatinate and Genoa while I called in both France and Spain and I had just allied Venice so I could call them in the war as well with promise of land as they had some course in Austria. This was a big war with a lot of big European nations but France and Spain were super strong and we made quick work of it. In just 4 years I managed to take a few provinces from Hungary and finish the war. I also gave a province to Venice and a province to France to keep them happy. And finally in 1593 I could form Romania. To be completely honest here, in my excitement to form Romania, I had forgotten that I needed to take all of Balkans for the achievement. And I could have attacked Ottomans earlier probably if I remembered it, but here we are and it wasn't that bad. And I decided to push on from here. Austria soon inherited the throne of Hungary so now they were super big. But it was time to attack Ottomans once more as now I had two military tech levels on them for some reason. They had a few small allies and I called in France and Mamluks. The idea was the same as before. Mamluks would get sieged down by Ottomans and I would take over Balkans in the meantime. And that's exactly what happened. Mamluks separate pieced early. France also white pieced after a while though. So I wrapped up the war quickly and managed to get some provinces in the Balkans region. The religious leagues had formed earlier and when the religious war was declared, I got called into it by France, which was unfortunate. I really didn't want to fight all those big nations so I declined the call. And so it was time to once more sit and wait for an opportunity. Finally in 1625 I decided to attack Austria. 
Austria had a lot of allies. Pomerania would join in as they were the emperor of HRE, and Bohemia, Brandenburg, Cleves, Genoa would also join in. I called in Spain to help out with the war. I expected it to be a bit difficult, but the war wasn't that bad. I mean, I ended up with no manpower and a couple of deaths, but I got all the provinces I needed from Austria. These are the provinces in Balkan region I needed for the achievement. After that, it was time to sit back and recover the manpower for a bit. In 1634, Mamluks called me into a war against Ottomans as Ottomans had declared on them. It would have been a close one, but Ottomans soon got declared on by Muscovy as well. So now Ottomans were having a bad time. The war ended in a white peace, which meant a truce, and I had to wait a few years again to attack Ottomans. Now, Ottomans had all the provinces I needed for the achievement. I declared on them in 1644 and called in Mamluks as the scapegoat one more time. I got close to 100% war score and a lot of provinces from this war, and I gave some provinces to my vassal Ragusa. In 1650, the institution of manufactories spawned in Romania, which is always nice. Now I was just waiting for the truce to be over so I can get those last few provinces from Ottomans. In 1653, Mamluks called me into a defensive war. They were getting attacked by Ming for some reason. And obviously, I didn't want to get involved in that war, so I declined the call. Finally, in 1662, I had managed to ally Mamluks once more and had enough favors with them to call them in a war. So I declared the final war on Ottomans. As always, Mamluks peaced out early, but I had enough war score on Ottomans soon enough and I managed to take rest of Balkans from them in 1667, thus completing the achievement. Ottomans actually went bankrupt after that. Finally, I had completed the achievement. And although it took longer than I expected, more because I didn't plan it very well, it was nice. You can obviously do this achievement a bit quicker if you plan better, and you can also expand in other directions if you want later, I was just going straight for the achievement. For ideas, I decided to open with defensive ideas, as having that extra morale is important when fighting someone as powerful as Ottomans. Then I took innovative ideas because I like them. Then offensive to get some more firepower because fighting against Ottomans is hard and the wars don't get super easy even mid-game. Lastly, I took influence as I had a couple of subjects now and it would be nice to annex them eventually. This achievement is a fun one. Although the starting position with Wallachia means it is RNG dependent in early stages, and I got lucky with Moldavia becoming free from Poland. If that doesn't happen in your game, you could no CB war against Serbia and expand towards Serbia, Bosnia, and the Dalmatian coast. But you will have to wait around and bide your time. Just look for some opportunities and take them when they come along. I hope this short achievement guide will prove helpful for some players. You were watching a Radio Guide. Thank you for your time and I will see you all in the next one.